I'm going to bring up our final storyteller for the night. We have known each other for many, many years, and I am so excited to have him back. Uh, you may have heard him on the Moth Radio Hour. He's been on the Moth Main Stage, and he's also appeared on Snap Judgment, and I'm so excited to have him back. Please give it up for Adam Lynn. So when I was in the third grade, uh, once a week, Sister Gilmoira would come down from her office and grab three or four of us and bring us into the small school library to do these uh, supplementary reading workbooks. Now, I absolutely adored Sister Gilmoira. She was, uh, she was like 170 years old, <laughs> right? And like, and into, into, so you'll have an image, I mean, she had white hair and very big teeth and she wore a, a nun's habit. So, I, I, she really looked a lot like Benjamin Franklin in a hajib, if you could kind of imagine that image, right? So, I, the, the, work, the workbooks were a little bit boring. They were really old, a lot of them from like the 60s, like the Houston Astrodome, new and exciting. So, they weren't that great, but what I really liked about the time we had with Sister Gilmoira was when you were done with the workbooks, you could go and grab any book in the little library and kind of sit there and just read by yourself for half an hour. So for me, that was like, this is the best part of my week, right? So, uh, and there were like a lot of baby books in that library, but there was this one book that as soon as I finished, I would run to it. And not that anyone else was, but I was always afraid someone else will take my book. It was this big hardcover, and it was titled Skin Diver. And, <laughs> Skin Diver, yeah. And so, uh, sometimes you can judge a book by its cover. So Skin Diver showed uh, a kid who, very ordinary, he looked pretty much like me, and uh, he had on the, the dive mask and some fins, and he was you know, underwater, clearly somewhere like the Florida Keys. And I wanted to be skin diver, right? Because you know, I'm this kind of like sickly kid living in Boston at this strict Catholic school. None of my friends were dolphins. You know, I didn't have a spear gun. <laughs> You know, when, when the bell rang, I'd go home and it would be like my grandmother drinking Canadian Club at the dining room table and burning the pork chops. So I, I definitely was kind of known around the school as the kid who would get a little too wrapped up in my imagination. So one day, right around Christmas time, when Christmas break had started, it wasn't Christmas yet, it was probably the first day of break, and I'm out on the street playing with Pat Donahue, and he's like the kid that every Catholic school has that's like, oh, he's kind of your friend, but he's also really hates you. And so he's like, he'll like turn around and be like, you fucking queer. And like just start hitting you for no reason, right? But so he and I are out like with our hockey sticks, like knocking around a, a tennis ball or something. And these two other guys, Tim Lonergan and Kevin Murphy come running down the hill and they're like, oh my God, oh my God, you guys got to get up to the school. We found something behind the school. And I'm like, treasure, treasure. Did you find treasure? And Pat's like, treasure. What are you talking about treasure? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe it's money or something. So we run up to the school, and what they've done is, I guess because it's Christmas break, they've cleared out the basement, and they're throwing away all this stuff. And there was this big cabinet full of all these old science things, like, they were like, m kind of old medically looking things, and dissecting jars with like weird fetal pigs floating in them and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, if we could get this stuff home, we start a laboratory, this is gonna rock, right? And they're like, oh, okay, like, but it was all locked, so we couldn't get any of it, and we were a little too young to like break it and break glass or whatever. So we're disappointed, we kind of walk away, but as we're walking away, Pat's like, well, what's this? And he picks up this container that he finds on the ground, and it's, about this big, it maybe holds a couple of pints, and it's this very ominous looking container. And I'm thinking it looks like something you got off like a Nazi sub. Now, n not everyone would think that, but I thought that. And so, I mean, what do you do when you're kids and you find something like that? We, we go into the schoolyard and we start throwing it around. <laughs> and we're like playing football with it and everything. And then at some point, Pat says, hey, you know, I'm gonna be a place kicker for the Patriots, so why don't we put it on the ground and I'm gonna kick it. And, and Adam, you stand there like with your arms like this, like a goal post, right? So, so you think you know where this is going, but it actually isn't. And so, and so I'm standing there and he, I'm standing there and he runs up and he boots this thing and by God, he could have been a place kicker for the New England Patriots, right? Because it doesn't come anywhere near me. It flies up over my head. We turn, we look, it comes skittering down right into the front door of the school and bursts open. And it is full of, we couldn't really tell, but ink, black paint, something bad, right? And it's 
all over the front door and all over the stairs, the granite stairs in this like bad looking tan brick. It's every, it looks like a giant squid has exploded on the front of St. Brennan's School. And so there's this silence. We just look at each other and we just run, right? We just run home. So, and when you're a little kid like that, I mean, I, I see my own kids do this kind of thing. I, I kind of just, like I got home and I was like, whew, that was weird. And then just kind of forgot about it. And, and Christmas <laughs> happened, and it was Empire Strikes Back, and I got the snow troopers I wanted, and I didn't get the ad ad, but I was cool. It was all good. <laughs> and after New Year's, when it was time to go back to school, I got sick. And, and like bronchitis, something like that. Now, I was always getting sick. I was always having these eye problems and having to go in and out of the hospital. So like missing school was not unusual for me. And I, I quite frankly, kind of liked it, right? So I'd stay home and get to read. Um, and so the first day, um, I'm at home, and you know, after school, there's a knock on the door, and it's it's I, I can hear someone talking to my mom, and it's it's Tim Lonergan, and he comes, you know, kind of thumping up the stairs, and he's brought the homework for me because that's how the school went, and uh, he comes in the bedroom, and I'm like all tucked up in the bed with a comforter under my chin and everything, and he he's got like this really short hair, like all most of the boys had, other than me, that he, he looked like a depraved otter, right? And he's kind of like comes in, and he's like. Uh, you know, I think you're wicked smart. And, 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 and I was like, smart, why? He's like, you were smart to stay away today. You better stay away longer. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? He's like, well, the, the ink on the school, it's not coming off. And the police got involved. And it's, it's gonna cost like thousands of dollars. And, and everyone knows you did it. <laughs> <laughs> And I've been like taking Sudafed for a couple days and I'm like, oh my God, there's this deranged otter at the foot of my bed. Like, no, this isn't really happening. And, and, and I said, well, Tim, did you tell them that I didn't do it? And he's like, well, uh, didn't really go like that. Like, uh, uh, there's a witness. And, and, and I'm like, what do you mean a witness? And he's like, uh, you know, a witness saw you do it. And um, yeah, no, you're gonna get expelled. And like, he leaves and I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna get kicked out of school? Like, is this possible? I mean, this, we all go to the same school, we all live near the school, my aunts went to the school, my uncles, my cousins, like, this cannot happen. So I went, next day when I go, I don't say anything to, to my mother, to my grandparents, so I just go up to school, and immediately they're like, okay, all of you need to go to Sister Donata Marie's office, and she's the principal, and it's like going into the witch's cave, because like, <laughs> Sister Donata Marie is not Sister Gamora, she's like a little younger and dynamic and kind of lean with this red hair, she looked like Nancy Reagan, kind of, or the Riddler, <laughs> one of the two, like really mean kind of looking, and then it, and, and Father Kane even comes up from the rectory, which was unheard of for like our hijinks, like he never got involved, he's got the black suit and the gray raincoat and the silver hair, and uh, I'm like, man, I cannot believe this. And he's like, well, boys, you know, um, can you say what happened? And you know, we're petrified. We're not saying anything. And he's like, well, someone, someone threw this ink. It turned out to be a, a container of mimeograph ink, which is this like oil-based ink that cannot be washed off. And it's like, one of you boys threw this ink on the school. Can, can, you, can you just say who did it? And he's like, Adam, did you do it? And I was like, no, no, no. And then like, I'm trying not to look at Pat because I'm thinking, well, if I do look at him, he'll just kill me. So uh, um, you know, I'm not going to say anything. And, and, then, and, then, and then the door opens up and they bring in this girl, Denise Fitzgerald, who, who wasn't even there. And he's like, well, what do you have to say, Denise? And she points at me and she's like, yeah, I saw him do it. <laughs> she was the witness. And it's like her brother, you know, went out with, with Pat's sister. Like, I, you know, how could you not see the setup here, right? <laughs> and I'm like, wow, I am gonna be kicked out of school. And the priest is like, you know, okay. And he comes and he's looking at us. And, and he's, 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 he's not looking us in the face, he's looking down at our shoes, right? And he's like really staring at me, and then he's really staring at Pat, right? He's like, okay, boys, you know, go out in the hallway. And so we're out in the hall, and the other guys are having a good time. They think this is funny. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, Adam Lynn's getting kicked out of school, so what, ha ha. And they're doing like Steve Martin routines and giving each other, you know, punching each other in the balls or whatever, you know, <laughs> nine-year-old boys do and everything. And I'm like standing out like, I'm like, I'll never smell this disinfectant again from the bathroom and like this industrial paint and all these things. And, uh, and I just start thinking, I'm like, well, what will happen if I get kicked out of this school? I'm like, well, I guess I'll go to another school. So I'm thinking like, like okay, it won't be skin diver. I bet there won't be dolphins or, 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 or speedboats or anything, but it could be cool. I mean, maybe 
everyone won't accuse me of doing stuff I didn't. I don't know. And I'm like, uh, you know, and, and then at that point, we get called back in to the office. And Father Ken says, okay, sit down, boys. And a minute later, the door of the office opens up, and Pat Donahue's mother comes in. She's like this very big, brassy kind of woman. She's got this giant plastic bag in her hand, like very ugly, crinkly bag, I remember. And uh, Father Ken takes her, and opens it up, and it's got, it's got Pat's boots in it, the ones that he actually was wearing the day that we were playing with the ink. And you can clearly see on one of the boots this big ink stain, kind of in like going down one side. And we're all just there silently. And his mother says, well, Pat probably stepped in a puddle of it when he kicked it, points at me, right? <laughs> so, right? And Father Ken says, yeah, well, maybe. And we get sent back to our classroom, and it gets dropped. It, it did cost a ton of money. They put new doors in the school or whatever. But it just remained an open mystery. But. Like a year later, I, 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 I kind of got sick again. My, my vision really started to fail, and I moved to the front of the room, and I still couldn't see the board, and then like, I was like on the board, and it, it just wasn't good enough. And very quickly, like, you're like, on a Monday I was at that school, and then boom, by like Friday, a little yellow bus was pulling up in front of my house, and I was out of that school. And I was going to this public school on the other side of town. And I get out there the first day, and it is a very different scene. And there's like girls doing double dutch and different kind of music and just a very different look to the student body. And I was okay with that. I was like, you know what, this could be all right. And within a month, I had like my first breakdancing hat and I, I, knew, I knew all the words to the Sugar Hill Gang, uh, Rapper's Delight. And I was like, this could have been traumatic to, to have all this stuff happening at once, but it was like that incident with the ink, instead of being like the worst thing that ever happened, in a way it let me use my imagination that I always used to just kind of shield myself from <laughs> the present. It, it, it was the first time I got to use imagination more as like a tool to open a window to like say, oh, there could be something better out there. And let me just go through the step through this window and see how it goes. And I did, and I keep doing stuff like that. And it, you know, lands me on stage with people like you, people I'm surrounded by friends and in love. Thank you so much. That's it. Yum's the word. 